<laughs> Here's the scenario, and bear with me as this will get a little bit wordy. You mainly work in Avid, but you love Resolve for its color capabilities and its speed at making proxy files. So why wouldn't you always use Resolve for proxies? In another video, I showed how easy it is to round trip between Avid and Resolve back and forth as much as you want. Well, the issue is if you're using dual system audio. If the audio is recorded on a separate device from the video in the field, and then you have to sync that audio up with your video in the suite. Now, it's not that Resolve can't sync audio to an external source. It's possibly better at it than Avid is. What Resolve isn't great at is tracking where that audio came from. You might say, who cares? Well, you want to know who cares? The Soundhouse cares. At the end of the edit, when the list is sent to sound and they have no way of linking up to the original audio files, well, then the phone rings and the producer calls and the Soundhouse calls. And then you know who cares? You care. That is why I have always done my syncing in Avid. It does track this information properly. So is there no way of utilizing Resolve's faster proxy workflow while maintaining metadata integrity? Well, if the answer was no, then this video would end right about now. Well, we're still here, so the answer must be yes. In this video, we're going to sync video to audio in Resolve and we're also going to track that audio information back through the rest of the post process. Let's take a look. Okay, so we are here in Resolve and we have uh, brought in these video clips and these audio clips. And they are uh, obviously different sources, but they do share time code. So it shouldn't be that difficult to sync them up inside Resolve. We're just going to take them and I'll select them all here. And I will right click, auto sync audio based on time code. And uh, we can see a little bit of information has popped into some of the columns up top. In this one called sync, synced audio, it actually gives us the name of the audio file that is being used with the corresponding video file. And that information is what we're going to need as we move forward into Avid. Now I'm just going to make a timeline now called uh, Sync to Avid. And there is our timeline. So this is what we're going to use to create our proxy files that are going to be edited with inside of Avid. Uh, and before we go ahead and do those proxy files, just hit save there and we are going to export an Avid Log Exchange file, an ALE file. And this is also going to be uh, fairly important when we move forward into the Avid world. So once that's done, we're going to go into Resolve, into the Deliver page. We will set up our output. We will transcode these and we will come back inside of Avid when all the transcoding is done. Okay, we are inside Avid and I have made a bin, sync audio sync from Resolve, and I have brought in the original WAV files that were recorded in the field uh, for the shots that we have proxied out of Resolve. Those proxy files are right here, so we will link to those in Avid as well. Now you'll notice as I call up different settings, uh, different view settings in my Avid bin, that none of them will show me any information about the audio that was embedded in these proxy files inside of Resolve. I have obviously the information from the WAV files that I've just brought in, but no information linking to these video files helps to identify where the audio comes from. It's just, as far as Avid is now concerned, the audio attached to these video files is the original audio. It's always been on this file. And that's the problem. When we send our edit to the sound house, they're going to get the exact same information. And quite often they want to go back to the original audio wave files and as it stands right now, they're just not going to be able to do that. 
So how do we get Avid to know where those audio files came from? That is why we made the ALE file. So let's bring that into the mix and see what it does. Now, before I bring in the ALE, I'm just gonna call up a uh, view of my bin in Avid that's very bare bones view of uh, information within these columns. Uh, and that's because if I, if I bring in too much column information from an ALE, I might overwrite column information that's already here inside Avid that I wanna keep. Uh, so I've made a bin view with uh, minimal column information and the column information I'm bringing in is really comes down to one column and that is one called sync audio that we saw in Resolve. That's where the file names are hopefully going to populate inside of Avid when we bring in this ALE. Now I did make a sync audio column inside of Avid, uh, pretty simple to do. So let's bring in our ALE. We're gonna go File, Import, Media. We're gonna work our way down to the ALE that Resolve exported. We're gonna check our options under Shot Log, uh, Merge Master Clips with Known Events down at the bottom here, and we'll open it. And what that does is that populates these columns inside Avid with the corresponding column information from Resolve. And what we've ended up with is our sync audio column nicely populated with information. And we can, we can see down at the bottom end of it here, we have the name of the file, including the extension.wav that is telling it where the audio for these video clips came from. But you can also see we've got the entire file path in this column. And that is information Avid doesn't want or need. Uh, Avid doesn't see it as a file path, it just sees it as one really long, long name. So we need to clean out that information. And we're going to do that by going to a program called Notepad++. I believe it's available Windows or Mac for free. Um, and it has the advantage over Excel or even basic Notepad of when it works with an ALE, it will not introduce foreign characters into the mix which really could destroy your ALE. So I just opened up the ALE directly out of Resolve and we can see all the columns are in here. Now don't worry that the tabbing might look a little odd. Uh, that's just the way it's gonna view in a, in a text editor like this, but the information is all correct. Don't go moving anything around, to try to space anything out or anything like that. And if we look down at the end here, we can actually see this column has the dot wave files uh, so there is all of our uh, information that we just brought into avid including this file path likes to jump around on me a little bit when i move side to side but we'll try to get it straightened out here so this file path what we want to do is a search and replace uh, for all the information leading up to that backslash. So I'm gonna highlight it. I'm gonna hit the replace button, which is actually gonna populate what I had highlighted, and I'm going to replace it with nothing. And when I hit the replace button, uh, we see that we only have the file name with the extension uh, and nothing else. And the program is actually smart enough to know that I wanna go up and down. So I can actually just hit replace all and it will do the rest of the columns underneath it. And uh, we're pretty much done in this program. We're just gonna save our ALE and uh, jump back into Avid. So back in Avid, we're gonna select these shots one more time and we're just gonna re-import that ALE. So again, import media, same ALE. This time it's been edited. And now our sync audio column only has the file name and the extension on it. And that's exactly what we wanna see. File name matches which one of these raw wave files that this video file is using for its audio information. So I'm going to uh, just cut away for a second. I'm gonna make a quick and dirty timeline out of these clips so that we have something to work with. Uh, nothing terribly fantastic. And I'll come back when that is built. Okay, so we're back and I have built a very simple little timeline here. 
uh, using the proxy material that was created out of Resolve, so it's not linking to any raw audio or video, just the proxies. And uh, we've submitted it to a client, and the client has approved it, so now we're going to send it to sound. Uh, but what I like to do before I send stuff to sound is I like to relink my timeline to the camera raw. Uh, it makes it easier for the colorist, makes it easier for the sound person, and uh, kind of helps me troubleshoot ahead of time before they come back screaming that something isn't linking up properly for them. So I'm going to move this raw audio, I'm going to move it over to this other bin that I've created called raw. This contains the raw video. Uh, I'm just going to store the raw audio there as well just to keep everything nice and neat for what we're going to do. Keep it together. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to select my sequence, right click, and we're going to hit the relink button. And we're going to relink to selected clips in open bins, all open bins. These are the, This is our, my open bin. These are all the clips that are selected, so we're going to relink to that footage with this sequence. And as far as our settings go, we're going to make turn this off, we're going to turn this on, make it nice and wide, turn these off. We do not need the data. And uh, we're actually going to turn off the audio. We're just going to relink video to see how that works. And typically you want to uh, link to your uh, source file name. I say OK. And very quickly you can see a little pop there that all of my video tracks changed their name ever so slightly, but enough that it was a change. And if I was to match frame this video track and do a fine bin, it will point me to the camera raw clip now. So my timeline video for every one of these clips is now actually pointing to the camera raw footage, not the proxy footage. Check this one, check this one. This will help when I make the list and I send it to the colorist, it will already be the list will already be pointing to the raw files for the colorist. It'll just help that person uh, do their relink. Um, but our goal today is to get that same information for the sound person. Can we relink this sequence for the sound person? So let's just make sure that's correct. Let's select our uh, Audio files, we can actually just select the audio files for this one. We don't need to relink the video again. So I'm just going to select the audio files and we're going to right click on this. We can pretty much leave our settings the same, except obviously this time we want to relink to audio, not to video. And we hit it and we get a relinking error. Troubleshooting. One of the first things I ask myself when troubleshooting an issue is what does the computer know? If you were to put yourself in the computer situation and look at the information being presented to you, could you do what you're asking the computer to do? So in the troubleshooting world again, we want to see what does the computer know? Let's call up my uh, resolve metadata option. We know that we want this audio, which is whatever it's called, dot wave, to link up with the original clips, which are called the exact same thing, but they're not called dot wave. And yes, I know we told it to ignore extensions, but Avid isn't really seeing this in extension. It's seeing this as just a big long file name that actually ends in dot wav. But over in our raw audio bin, the originals, the tape ID column does say dot wave. So in a perfect world, we would get Avid to relink information in the sync audio column to information in the tape ID column. And that is where the relink options need to get flushed out a little bit. If we go into the relink, we can now switch this to the target being different than the original. Now the original is sync audio. The original is not camera original. It's the original that Avid is working with, which in this case are the proxy files. The target is the tape ID column. 
So we want Avid to compare the sync audio column in one bin to the tape ID column in another bin. And we tell it to relink and all of a sudden our audio files are now changed over to the original WAV file source names. We can now take this entire timeline, export a list for sound, and they will have the information of the original camera file or the original audio files embedded in it. And we can send it to the colorist and they will have the information of the original video files embedded in it. So there you go. We have successfully synced audio in Resolve, output proxies, brought those proxies into Avid, and identified the source audio files for each proxy clip inside of Avid. That information can now be carried over to a sound house if needed. I hope you gained something from this workflow. Please leave comments below if you need any clarification or you have any other ideas to share. Thanks for watching.